All right, good morning everybody. After a wonderful 140 mile drive down here to this specific machine. Came down yesterday, troubleshot it, they complained that it was a fuel leak. Come to find out it blew threads out of the injection pump. So today we're gonna show you how to change an injection pump out on a CAT C93 engine. It's uh, notorious in 140 M motor graders, 336 excavators, D6T dozers, and if I remember correctly, I believe it is 972 engines or 962 uh, loaders. One of those two models has the C93, and I have to look it up to remember exactly. Anyways, Cat C93. Um, you may also find over the road trucks, same engine, uh, F750s run them, and whatnot on the older models. This procedure is the same for all of them. Uh, granted, you do an excavator, you'll be hanging upside down on some of that. Uh, the dozer's a little more cramped, a little more compact in there to get to everything. Um, by far, the two easiest ones on here are going to be your wheel loader and the motor grader to get them done. Um, and F750s are pretty easy to get done as well. So, get started. I got a panel I got to pull back out of the way so I can get in and bar the engine over. You got to time the engine and whatnot. And then uh, we'll go from there. I already got a few of the things removed from yesterday during the troubleshooting. So, yeah, we'll go from there. Courtesy of this fitting right here, where it goes in right back here, it's a 90 degree elbow. That fitting blew the threads out of the pump, so the whole thing just wiggles. Put a wrench on it right here where the jam nut is, and the dang thing just wiggles when you try to take it loose. I uh, tried to tighten it up the jam nut, and of course, it was just pulling the threads out the rest of the way. As you can see, this is an updated pump, not the original. This is what it looks like. Little bitty. Got an Allen. Takes a quarter inch Allen. Take that thing out. Sometimes they can be a little snug. I do 
not put them in with an impact. Inside that little hole, there will be a timing mark in there that the special timing bolt comes in. Now you got your leverage to bar it over. I'll try to get you in here anyways. I don't know if it'll be possible, but we'll see. Yeah, you might be able to kind of tell. It's like a little dip in there. It's like an oval, oval dip. Everything else is smooth. This is the only dip in this thing. For those wondering what the timing bolt would look like, it looks like this right here. It's got a little bitty nipple on it. Other side of it's just a regular wrench size. Uh, I believe it's like a 14 or 9 16 Anyways, you don't put the O-ring on. You can thread it all the way down by hand and snug it by hand, don't even need a wrench. It's loose, gets in the way sometimes. Part two, got the pump off. We got the new one here in the box. As you can see, this one has a timing bolt here, just like we put in the old one when we took the old one off. This one's also got no fittings on it or anything. So, I'm going to swap fittings over real quick. Once that's taken care of, we'll get everything back up in place, get it mounted, and put everything back together. Then we'll be ready to start the machine and put it back to work. Some of these little plastic plugs, they can be a pain in the butt. with the old one. That is the whole reason that we gotta change this thing out. Now that's something nice to notice. So there's a nut that's supposed to go here and obviously there wasn't one here. It's supposed to go here. Hold those in place, keep that sturdy. My guess is that's not tight. Lots of vibration these, that these machines see. Probably the cause of the failure. It's got a jam nut on it, so you can just tighten the jam nut once you position it. As you can see, my assortment of spare parts. You never know what you might find in here. One. Now these aren't the correct nuts, I should say. They didn't come with a, they're not what Holt sent, or what Caterpillar would send you if you order from Cat. But, they came off of a John Deere, so, can't be too bad. get a few teeth off and they not even run.
first things first. We got everything back together and whatnot. I've got the key on, monitoring for fuel leaks right now. Let this pump cycle, oh, at least until it shuts off. Make sure that the dang uh, fuel system is fully primed. Currently, I don't see any fuel leaks. So, we're good there. Get the computer hooked up while we're at it. Computer loads. We'll double check faults, make sure there's nothing related to what we just did. And then we will give it a start. status report pulls everything on the ECM all the histories whether it's on every ECM that's available to read with the computer uh, main reason for doing the product status report is kind of a CYA it gives me the ability to come back if a customer tries to call me and say hey you touched this machine last, now it's doing this or whatever, blah, 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 and it's got this fault. I can pull history on it and say, okay, well, when I messed with it, it had 10,362 hours on it. And the issue you're complaining about happened long before I ever touched it. But you said, leave it alone. So, you know, go from there. Uh, but yeah, thanks for joining me on this. Uh, feel free to subscribe to my videos, see my videos and whatnot. We do a bunch of variations of things from working on heavy equipment and fixing it to working on vehicles, doing modifications to vehicles as far as upgrading factory parts with aftermarket parts. Uh, thermal hunting and do some fishing and so on so feel free to subscribe and see y'all next time thank you